So the focus of my talk is a, a body, and I would like to see body as a mean for emergence, and I hope this will come through the talk. And uh, so I want to focus on the dual role of, of body. And on one side, through the body, you express your emotion to others. And probably you can read, I'm pretty nervous. I've been sitting there all day waiting for this time. Uh, and the other side, maybe less intuitive, is, is that through our body, we are talking to us. We are affecting our, the way we feel. We are affecting our emotions. So, and I, I, I want to, to talk to, about this two aspect. And these two, two roles of body offer very interesting uh, opportunities and challenges to people who develop technology, interactive technology in particular. And so now we have technology that sends our body, so this also opens interesting possibilities. So we, we shake our iPhone and it knows uh, what we want to do. Uh, we have technology, probably some of your kids have technology that uh, uh, sends your body and you can interact with the computer game through their bo your body. So can we use all this information that the sensors that are integrated in the technology we use every day can capture and understand our feelings? So going back to the first talk this morning by Michael, can technology go into our shoes and understand better how we feel and support us better? Or even as a second talk at the end said, help us to know more about ourselves. And uh, uh, let's think to rehabilitation, physical rehabilitation, an area I'm working in, how important it is to understand how the patient feels so that we can uh, adapt online the, the, the physical activity need to do the program so that it fits its need and we can also provide him psychological support to encourage uh, him or boost his confidence. So, but why body? When we, we think to uh, uh, emotion and to recognize emotion in others, the first thing that comes to our mind is the face, is the vocal expression. And for sure, this is a very important channel and a lot of work showing this. But also there are evidence, a growing amount of evidence, showing that the body speaks as much as the face and it can uh, show the, co uh, the complex emotion that uh, we go through. And here just... Uh, to animation that I created from real data from people we simply ask to uh, walk. And, need to. and in, what, in one case is uh, uh, and yeah. one person, the difference is that one person is a patient with, is a, is a person with chronic pain and low mood, in the other case is a controlled participant. And hopefully from this simple representation of the body, you can recognize which one has a more controlled way of, of moving and quite a, a, a down low mood. So can, can we get technology to do the same, to recognize this cue and then use this cue so that uh, it can support us much better? And so this is what we're trying to do in our lab. We are using a lot of sensors to continually capture information about our movement, our posture. We have a sensor placed on different parts of the body, limbs and trunk and the head. And uh, we can capture information that describes the configuration of the body, how bent we are, how open our body is, uh, the, our speed, the jerkiness of our mood, uh, movement. But we also have, uh, uh, we use uh, electromyography sensor here that uh, allow to capture the activity of the muscle that may inform us about the emotion the person is going through, high contraction or some abnormally patterns so like avoidance to use a part of our body because we are uh, afraid to increase the injury. And so using all this information, this large amount of information we collect continuously, we can use special algorithms to try to make sense between the chaos of the, uh, in, in these numbers and find order that, uh, uh, or a regular pattern that uh, uh, allow us to discriminate between different emotional expression. And here's some example of uh, what the system can find just by looking at uh, uh, the, the degree of bending of the 
top uh, of the trunk and the head, uh, been able to discriminate between high mood and, and low mood, or also other type of information. In this case, is the amount of movement and looking at this over time and how and looking at how the, the variability uh, of this measure allow us to, to identify very different profile that reflect a different state the person may be in. And how does a, a technology perform just by using this law information, so without contextual information? And pretty well, the, the, the results of our system here are in blue. And uh, uh, it was about recognizing four different emotional states in the computer game context. So naturalistic expression, people didn't know what we were doing. And we can see that if we have arranged this uh, result, they're pretty similar to the red line that represent uh, the, the, the agreement obtained by human observer judging the same type of posture. And of course, we, we are not reading what the person is really feeling. We are reading what, uh, from outside, we can perceive from this uh, uh, um, configuration and uh, the dynamic information. And if we compare this result to uh, current uh, results uh, obtained in the challenge on rec automatic recognition of naturalistic facial expression, we can see uh, that the best results uh, in yellow were pretty similar to the one we obtained uh, on uh, just using the body information. So quite powerful uh, modality for reading how a person uh, feels. But this is not the story because, um, well, we live in a multicultural, for example, we live in a multicultural society. So we, 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 we mix up with people from different culture. And since we read so much from other people's body, how sure are we that a person from another culture will read correctly the way uh, our body, our body expression? Well, uh, this, uh, um, we did some uh, uh, study on what is called uh, um, to investigate the universality of this uh, body expression. And in fact, we found a very mixed picture. There are um, expressions that uh, all agree uh, correspond in this case to sadness, this bent body and the arm bending along the, uh, along the body. Uh, but that's not the case for this second set of, of, of posture where uh, uh, the Japanese culture that was invited in our study tended to completely separate from sudden and say, well, this is more frustration, anger, while another group of people from a different culture were seeing this is another way that people could express sadness. So, I'm not going in, in this talk to, to discuss why this happened. Um, uh, uh, it is, is, is really true. And, and, but what, what is interesting here is, is saying that there is a, um, uh, a different in way we read other people's body, and maybe not just due to culture, but there might be other factors like uh, uh, even gender. Or we, we also behave quite different in different situations. So a system, like I showed before, that learn from a, a set of data and then use what you learn to uh, just to read whoever, it may not work. As I spent 10 years in Japan, and the first time I moved there, I was very surprised by certain expression. I was not expecting a response of, of what I was saying or was doing. But little by little, I learned to understand that. And even I realized that my body was starting to express the same, uh, to use the same verbal language in, in a particular situation. So through interaction, through exposure, I learn and I adapt. So can the system do that? And uh, through interaction with the person, continuously learning and, and, and uh, get to understand his friends or his user much better. And here, uh, sorry for the not very nice graph, but some uh, result we obtained in a study we, we run with uh, uh, having a, a system interacting with a student during a learning activity and see if the system starting from zero, not knowing anything of this body language, and see if you could develop a code um, uh, um, to, to understand what the person was feeling and then use that information to adapt. So we could see that uh, in our case in the, um, the system, as soon as we started to see a certain type of, of similar uh, expression, say, oh, this must be a particular type 
of, of, of state, the microscope will respond to a particular type of state. And then if it was getting feedback, would also say, oh, that, they say, well, I'm, I'm a little bit down and the results are not good. So let's call this said. And then seeing, oh, look, another one, this is pretty different from the other. It must be another type of affected state. And, and then if I get feedback and I look at the result, that must be a good one. And, and so on. So new categories were emerging. But what's interesting is that uh, if another category was emerging, and of course I got the feedback, oh, this is called interest, but it was uh, somehow interfering with the previous one that I learned because they share a lot of features, they share a lot of comments, so quite quiet, so on. The system was started to uh, unlearn a little bit what's said and, and having again, to try to understand and find the feature that allow this to separate. And through continuous exposure, this curve could go up again and continue to grow. So it was a continuous learning and a learning to adjust to this person and knowing this person better. So rather than something predefined and where even the language was predefined, but new words could come out. It could be even words that didn't make a sense in any of uh, the language we currently speak. So, Body is quite an important, uh, interesting modality that uh, can make, uh, help us to uh, have a, a, a communication channel emerge between us and technology in which we can communicate over, um, a, a, a about our fact. We can get technology to better understand us and better support us. And it'd be a very interesting modality because in some situation we may uh, not have a facial and, and vocal experience available. We think uh, uh, monitoring people in a, a large environment outside. But there are also situations in which privacy is a concern and maybe facial expression are not uh, the best way to, to support a person. But uh, what is more interesting is then to put also put all this uh, modality uh, together. Um, but this is only one side of the story. Uh, there is another side of the story, as I said at the beginning. Uh, our body doesn't speak only to others, but it speaks also to ourselves. There is incredibly uh, increasing number of evidence that the way we stand, the way we move is affecting the way we perceive ourselves and we perceive the environment uh, around us, objects, products, and even people. And, uh, for example, staying in a position that is related to a uh, general negative state, even if it's been uh, imposed on us, so it doesn't really represent what we feel in that moment, this tends to bring us to develop negative thought about us, about our performance, independently of how we are performing, and the opposite if we keep our uh, body straight. So you can try to straight up your body and, and seeing how this is trying to bias, bias you in a certain direction. Uh, does this happen in, in the, when we are inter interacting with technology and can we exploit this uh, uh, mechanism if this is the case? And it was, um, it was one question on the wall, it was interesting, is technology reducing our ability to feel? And we saw that probably uh, is not uh, like that, but I hope the body can even uh, bring us to feel uh, emotion. Uh, much more than before when we are interacting with technology, not just through technology. Here there are uh, two people playing the same game. Uh, the first person is an expert player, and you can see is that he knows very well how to use the Wii. He's not using too much of the body, very controlled movement to make sure he gets the point right. No emotion like only at the last moment when he missed the point is his turning of the face. The same game, exactly the same, a very different style of playing. Uh, is it a beginner, but he got a, still make a lot of, made a lot of points. But as you see, he's involved completely through his body, and we can see on his face a lot more emotion coming out. So there is a, a, a seems to be a different experience that may come through, that may emerge through the feedback we get through our body. We run different control experiments in which we put naive uh, players to play different games and we impose on them certain movements. Say, oh, to control the game, you need to do uh, this. So, for example, you say to fly, you need to swing your arm with fluid and large movement. And then we say, well, we change the setting now, you have to do uh, very jerky and small movements. So, a combination of different quality of body movement. And 
what, in fact, we observe some interesting effect and in uh, where the quality of the movement were changing the way um, we are affecting how people were feeling and their self-report of their emotion at the end of, of the game. So just to conclude, so the body becomes an interesting an interesting modality, not only for talking and, and creating this challenge between us and technology and getting technology in our shoes and support us, but also uh, letting the experience is not predefined by who designed that technology, but the experience emerged through the involvement of our body and is also an interesting mean to steer it from a design perspective. And I conclude here, uh, so just one more slide, as I was at the end. And here is, as I said at the be beginning, we are working in a large project for a, a physical rehabilitation of people with a musculoskeletal and chronic pain. And here the idea is to motivate them to be physically active. And we are using all the modality to read their facial expression in collaboration with Imperium, working on face and, uh, uh, and voice, and we're working on body. And for us, it become interesting to see this uh, movement that relates hesitation or stiffness uh, or asynchrony in the way the muscle are used may indicate anxiety or avoidance of doing movement that uh, may, according to their thought, bring to uh, injury. And uh, I would like to conclude by thanking uh, all the uh, people working with me, uh, my collaborator, my student, and also the other people on the ground. <laughs>